What's going on? This is Metacosis Perfect Natus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's resume our biology playlist. In previous videos, we have talked about the thyroid gland, the parathyroid gland, and the adrenal gland. Today, it's time to talk about the endocrine pancreas, the insulin world versus glucagon world. Insulin is anabolic, glucagon is catabolic, yet both of them come from the pancreas. This is my biology playlist. Please watch these videos in order. What's the difference between autocrine, paracrine, endocrine? Autocrine is a cell that secretes something to act on the same cell. Paracrine, a cell, secretes something to act on the neighboring cells locally. Endocrine is a cell that secretes something, dump it into the bloodstream. The bloodstream is going to take it to distant locations globally, all over your body. Now, what's the difference between endocrine and exocrine? Exocrine has a duct, so a gland will secrete a secretion into the duct. The duct will take it to a nearby organ. However, endocrine doesn't have a duct. It will dump its secretion into the bloodstream to take it to distant places all over your body. The pancreas alone has the two systems, exocrine and endocrine. The exocrine part is the part that has ducts, such as this beautiful pancreatic duct or main pancreatic duct. Endocrine is ductless. Exocrine will secrete the secretions into the duct. The duct will take it to the nearby structure, which is the duodenum, which is part of your GI system or gastrointestinal system. How about the endocrine? Ductless. These islets of Langerhans will secrete their secretions directly into the bloodstream. And the bloodstream will take them to distant places all over your body. Exocrine pancreas secretes enzymes. These are your digestive enzymes. But endocrine pancreas secretes hormones. Not enzymes, but hormones. Give me examples of these enzymes. Pancreatic amylase, lipase, colipase, trypsinogen, chymotrypsin, all of this lovely stuff. How about the hormones? You have a glucagon, insulin, and somatostatin. Glucagon is from the alpha cell of the iot of Langerhans. Insulin from the beta cells. Somatostatin is from the delta cell. Look at this. The S looks like a delta. Ha ha. For example, look at this. Here is the lovely pancreas. We have exocrine pancreas and endocrine pancreas. Exocrine, we have a duct. This is called the pancreatic duct. It's going to take the pancreatic digestive enzymes and give them to the local tissue called the duodenum. But the endocrine pancreas, these cells are ductless. They will dump their hormones directly into the bloodstream. These islets of Langerhans are part of the body and the tail of the pancreas to be specific. Do you remember the story of the CEO followed by the general manager and then you have the employees and the independent contractors? As you see, the pancreas is an independent contractor, meaning the pancreas is not influenced by the pituitary. Do you remember this? Insulin is in one land, all the other hormones are in a separate opposite land. Insulin is anabolic. All the others are catabolic. What do you mean by all the others? I mean you have glucagon, cortisol, epinephrine, and thyroid hormone. Insulin, anabolic. Glucagon, catabolic. Both of them come from the endocrine pancreas in the islets of Langerhans. Glucagon comes from the alpha cells. Insulin comes from the beta cells. Insulin anabolic, glucagon catabolic. Insulin is a builder, glucagon is a destroyer. Insulin is secreted in the feeding state so that you can build up and store some stuff for a rainy day. But glucagon is a destroyer. You need it in the fasting state. When you're fasting, you need to break down the big stuff into small stuff so that you can burn it and get energy. For example, you should break down the glycogen into glucose, burn that glucose, get you some energy because you need it. Insulin, builder, anabolic, feeding state, protein anabolic, glycogen anabolic, and fat anabolic. What do you mean by protein anabolic? Build those amino acids into big proteins. And this is called protein synthesis or proteogenesis. And then let's build up these small teeny tiny glucose molecules into big glycogen particles. How do you do this? Glycogen synthesis or glycogenesis. Third, 
build up those free fatty acids into triglycerides via lipid synthesis or lipogenesis. Conversely, glucagon is the exact opposite. It's a destroyer. It is catabolic. You see it in the fasting state. It's going to break down your protein into amino acids. It's going to break down the glycogen into glucose. It can take those amino acids and make them into glucose because you need energy right now. And this is called gluconeogenesis. So destroying the protein is called proteolysis, but using amino acids to make glucose is called gluconeogenesis. Basically, this is genesis of glucose from new sources. New sources meaning something other than the carbohydrate, such as proteins or fat. Some fat, not all the fat. All right, triglycerides. Break it down, lipolysis, into free fatty acids. When you do this, unfortunately, you will secrete some ketones. When it comes to ketones, I have good news, I have bad news. All right. In the absence of glucose, ketones become your brain's favorite source of energy. That's the good news. The bad news is too much ketones can lead to ketoacidosis because you know what are the names of the ketones? You have acetone, acetoacetic acid, beta hydroxybutyric acid. These are acids. They can cause acidosis. Well, no duh. Let's talk about the endocrine pancreas. Glucagon comes from the alpha cells, insulin from the beta cells, somatostatin from the delta cells. If we look closer into the islets of Langerhans in the pancreas, you'll find that the beta cells are in the center. You know why? Because insulin is the most important. Oh, it is central. Yeah, because insulin alone has its own world. But glucagon, well, cortisol is kind of similar. Thyroid hormone is kind of similar. Catecholamines are kind of similar. But you only have one insulin, and that's unique. This is central. Put it in the center of the islets. Okay. Who's on the periphery? Alpha cells to secrete glucagon. And where are these delta cells? They are interspersed in between the alpha and the beta. And they secrete somatostatin, which is a universal inhibitor. Somatostatin inhibits everything. It inhibits insulin. It inhibits glucagon. It even inhibits its own secretion. Isn't that crazy? Let's review the pancreas from Pickmonic. Let's go. As you know, there is exocrine pancreas and endocrine pancreas. The endocrine pancreas is towards the body and the tail. Exocrine is more to the front. So we're talking about the head unsinate process. The exocrine pancreas contains two things, the acinar cells and the ductal cells. Here is the acinar, the acai, and the ductal by the duct. Acinar cells secrete the digestive enzymes. Look at this lovely enzyme. But the ductal cells secrete bicarbonate. The endocrine pancreas contains beta cells. Here's the beta fish. The alpha cells and the delta cells. Beta cells secrete insulin. Alpha cells secrete glucagon. And delta cells secrete somatostatin. Here is Soma Santa, which is a universal inhibitor. It inhibits everything, including the beta cells and the alpha cells. More mnemonics like these are available at Picmonic. Glucagon is catabolic, as you know. It wants to increase glucose in the blood. Insulin is anabolic. It wants to decrease glucose in the blood. Take that glucose, put it into the cells, away from the blood. After you put that glucose into cells, help it become glycogen because you are anabolic. Somatostatin, a universal inhibitor, inhibits everything. Normally, the ligand alone is not active. The receptor alone is not active. But when the ligand and receptor hug each other, they become active. The ligand receptor complex is active. Therefore, pathology can hit you here in the ligand or can hit you here in the receptor. When it comes to insulin and the insulin receptor, if I destroy your insulin, this is called type 1 diabetes. If I destroy your receptor, this is called type 2 diabetes mellitus. Either way, insulin cannot work. Decreased insulin effect means that the glucose in your blood will go up, called hyperglycemia. Hyper means high. Glyce is the glucose. Emia means blood. Okay, right, I have too much glucose in the blood. Eventually, you'll have too much glucose in the urine, called glucosuria, glucose in the urine. When you have too much glucose in the urine, glucose is osmotically active. It's going to pull some water with it, causing increased urine volume, polyuria. So you have, and when you're losing tons of fluid in the urine, you will get thirsty, called 
polydipsia. That's why symptoms of diabetes are hyperglycemia, glucosuria, polyuria, polydipsia. There is also polyphagia, which means you get hungry and you eat a lot, because even though you have too much glucose in the blood, this glucose cannot enter into the cell to get metabolized. Why not? Because you don't have insulin or insulin is not working. If you like this video, you will adore my endocrine pharmacology course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. Learn about the different types of insulin. Learn about how to calculate the dose of insulin. Learn about cortisol, thyroid hormone, estrogen, androgen, etc. I also have another video about the acid-base imbalance. If you want to learn about diabetic ketoacidosis and the hyperglycemic non-ketotic coma. And for a limited time, get 40% discount toward anything on my website. Just use discount code KIDNEY at checkout. It's medicosisperfectionalis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website, download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.